Hey, this is Gage here. Welcome to another By the Numbers video for Josephine. <laughs> Those crits, though. Hey, hey, guys. Gage here bringing you another video. This time we're going to discuss everybody's favorite unit, Josephine, or as I like to call her, Josie, because this is my future wife and all. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> so today we're going to go over uh, her stats, her abilities, where she can be used, what she's good for, what units synergize with her, and what gear choices you should probably use for her. Okay, so starting off, let's go over her skills. Her basic attack here is uh, maxes out at 130% damage. To a single target, and she is a melee unit, so she's going to have to get in there. 130, pretty good scaling. Uh, really good, actually, for a basic attack. Uh, her Bloody Rose ability, her first active skill, maxes out at 160, I believe, at 160, which is amazing on a two-turn cooldown and a stun for one turn. So they get... Really, one turn in there to do something. Probably her hardest hitting ability. Her AOE. The, on, when she's under auto control, this is the first ability she will use, and it has massive range. Massive. It also has a really cool ability. So what this does is, at max level, it deals 105% of your physical attack damage to all targets within range, and reduces their action gauge by 500. Increases your ally's movement range by 2 for 1 turn. At max skill, this also has a cooldown of 4. This ability opens up a lot of possibilities for her. She has became probably one of the strongest farming units because of this ability. Because of its massive range. Okay, And last but not least... Probably what most people are considering her OP for is her passive ability. All your allies get 25% dodge just from her being in the group. This opens up a lot of synergies, uh, which we'll discuss here in a little bit. But her leadership ability. She's one of the units that leadership ability affects three elements. Fire, wind, shadow, get... Physical attack increased by 15% and max HP increased by 20%. Pretty strong. She also has a light counterpart. Their kits are the exact same. The only differences are in their action charge speed, which we'll talk about. And then their leader ability does the same thing. It's just lights affects water and light instead of shadow, wind, and fire. Okay. Uh, next is her stats. Her stats are default for physical DPS. Uh, 3615 hit points, 983 physical attack. That's the same that Garrett has. That's the same that Nazan has, all that. The only part that differs is the action charge speed. For Josephine here, she starts out with 226, which is one point lower than Fire Garrett. Uh... Still not bad, not bad. You can boost it with items and everything. Now, the light version is significantly slower. Not significantly, but 11 points slower. So she's going to need a lot more loving. I got you, Josephine. I got you. <laughs> she also has um, physical damage immunity of 10, so she takes less damage from other physical units. But she takes increased damage from magic attacks. Block rate, 10% block rate. She has no innate dodge, but when you go into battle, that her passive affects her as well. If she had any innate dodge rate, that would just be broken. Be off the charts. Defense pen rate, 10%. Usually physical DPS have some sort of defense penetration. Uh, effect resistance. She has a built-in 20%. She's going to need it. Okay. Uh, on her. Uh, all right. Let's let's talk about this unit here. 
Okay, so if you did the event, the step up summons, you pulled. Ah, where am I going? Back up. Your heroes. There's also. There's also an outfit for. This is her outfit. This is what I've currently got mine out. I'm missing two skill ups. But if you did the event, you pulled either one or multiple from the step up summons. And then you also got one for completing the Sparrow event, which if you're lucky, you got both elements. If not, you got all the same element like I did, <laughs> which is fine. You got my fire come close to being complete. Now, for gear-wise, what I've got on her is I had an extra katana laying around. Uh, it's not the gra greatest, but it does. it is pretty good. What I go for, she's not a heavy DPS unit. She has one heavy hitting ability that can use every two turns, which is amazing. But her kit makes her more of a support. She's there to boost the movement range and to get your other units faster. Take away turns from the enemy and make it to where your heroes can engage the battle more frequently. She's not a tank, but I was fortunate enough to get a roll uh, max. Fire physical damage, 18% on this weapon for her. If you've got a crit chance weapon laying around, throw it on her. Crit chance is still the best thing possible, unless you're talking about PvP now, where everybody's running crit damage reduction. If you're, start, if you're seeing water fairy is pop up in PvP, then I would gear her more defense penetration and physical attack percent over crit damage or crit strike chance. If you're not seeing that, crit chance is the way to go. It'll probably be the way to go for a long time. Now, ring-wise, I don't have the best rings on her. I had what was laying around. How I would gear her if I had a choice. See, I don't have any of them. These rings, Elven Perna rings, with the action charge speed, but with a double action charge speed roll in there. You want her as quick as possible. Ideally, if you're using her in PvE content, you want her to go right after your buffers. So if you have a Horus that's using mm -hmm. crit chance buff, make her go right after that buff. That way she gets the goodness of Arendelle's shield, of Fairy's defense buff, of Horus's crit buff, any other buffs that you're using. She's getting that goodness, and then she's going and increasing the movement range of your next DPS in line so he can, or she, can get to the target quicker. Okay. Now, for as far as accessory enchants, two choices really for PvE content for her. Dodge rate is probably the way I would go. Another one is HP. Get 1,200 HP rolls, which can make her tanky. That's the other way you can build her if you have the new uh, enchant or the new accessories, rather. That I saw a lot of people building her with the new ones because they have more hit points and it allows uh, Josie to stay alive longer in the heroic jungle fights. Um, if you're using her in PvE or if you're using her to farm. Like the penetration, not penetration, uh, what is it, cruelty? The dungeon for the assassin weapons right now. You'll need the accuracy accessory on her. Another viable build would be the dodge and block rings. But number one default build will probably be double action charge speed. Okay, so units you can use her with. Anybody, <laughs> really, as long as they fit the elements. She is definitely a jack of all trades. She can fit with Horus here. She can fit with Garrod. She, as a leader, she increases the physical attack and the hit points of all the units around her. So it helps having her as lead in the heroic because it keeps your other melee units alive longer. Kindle. Kindle is viable with her. Uh, even though if you run, if you're running those units, I would run a Horus lead or another crit chance lead and then use her in the party with them because they still rely heavily on crit okay also the new sparrow unit is actually sparrows a counter to her 
but if they're in the party together, they both have crazy AoEs, same range. Pharaoh's just does the opposite of hers. Pharaoh's decreases the movement range of the units he hits, while Josie's increases your movement range. Um, my my default team I use her with is. Josie lead, Jared, either Kendall or Dark Lilas, since her leadership ability affects Fire, Wind, and Shadow. Either one of those units. Any of your heavy DPS units, she's going to need DPS support. Uh, Arendelle tank is, or a Kalido is perfectly viable to guard her. If you have a version that fits, that fits her leadership ability even better. Fire Arendelle's not not too terrible. Wind Arendelle could has the shield, so she can he can fit in right with her leadership ability and still uh, benefit from it. Um, yeah. Okay, so moving on, where can you use her? Now, I have some clips. I'm, I may make a standalone video. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. Or I may throw them in the op, the the end of this video. But I use her to farm everything in Adventure now. I've got... I farm 2-7 for... She, running double Josie, you can actually clear this in 14 seconds. Uh, all of these. All of these can clear in pretty quickly with... Double Josie. Uh, four, 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 four mythic. Everybody's favorite thing to farm. With Josephine, run Josephine as yours. Put three fodders and then use a dark Garrod, and you can clear it in fourteen seconds. Yours doesn't even have to be max skill. Just throw some percent rings. Pretty much everywhere in adventure, you can use her. I even use her in the new map as a part of my team. Uh, you can also use her in all the all the hero songs I use her for. I've see if we can throw in some clips here. But um Armin Sparrow, I use her this dungeon. I mean you can just use her for this dungeon. Dungeon's really easy. The uh, I, I haven't tried her in Labyrinth yet. But the uh, wanted's I use her for all of farming all this stuff especially proving grounds of penetration that's probably where she's strongest because right now you, there's a wind they're all wind and fire it's a 50 percent increase in damage so running fire garrett and josephine and don't bring a ranged unit uh, josephine's ae ability will barely hit for anything but it still removes the action charge gauge but her bloody Rose ability will hit for like three k a hit if she crits. I'm waiting to build my sparrow to run. I will probably run her in this too, but I'm waiting to build my sparrow for the accuracy. Uh, I use her to auto farm this as well, assault training, and I use her in all if I'm ever farming kitties. If you ever need to farm kitties, just run double Josephine. That's all you got to run now because they changed the layout and it's easier to get to them. Run double Josephine, you'll clear it in about either anywhere from 15 to 30 seconds per run. Same with the weapon dungeon. All right. Um, did I miss anything? We talked about the skins, right? Yeah, I think we did. But you can get these, her default value, which I'm kind of torn on which one I like more. Um, but, yeah. About where we have. Where to obtain her? You can only obtain her out of the step up summons here. Ah, uh, not there. Here. Oh well, I'm sorry. This event is over. <laughs> Josephine's event is over. It's now Sparrow. Uh you could only obtain her from there. Now there's an event going on. If you complete Sparrow's story, you actually get rewarded with a Josephine. So I recommend doing that as soon as possible. All right, guys, thanks for watching. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up and subscribe. And if you have any feedback or any questions, just leave them in the comments, and I'll see what I can do.
if you want to follow me or join the community, you can always follow me on Twitch. I stream weekdays starting around 5 p.m. Central Time for a few hours, and then on weekends, Saturday and Sunday from noon until I get tired. Also, like us on Facebook, follow on Twitter, you know, stay in touch. I also have a Discord server. But anyway, thanks for watching, and stay gaming.